Hey, good evening. It's uh, Friday, May 17th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. Always happy to have the cows along. We're continuing to look through the various types of literature in the Bible, the genres, and tonight I'm going to look at wisdom literature. I'm going to take two nights to do this because I think the wisdom literature, the Psalms, the Proverbs, those are places that people go to a lot. But I believe they're some of the most understood passages in the Bible. So I'm going to take two nights to deal with that. We're going to look at wisdom and Proverbs tonight and our emotions and Psalms tomorrow night. So wisdom literature, Hebrew poetry, consists primarily of these books, Psalms, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Song of Songs, Ecclesiastes, Lamentations. This wisdom genre, this wisdom style of literature is what it gives us examples, what it looks like to apply wisdom in every corner of your life. This wisdom literature is designed to protect and nourish your emotions for your good. Such a huge resource for us. And then it provides the right framework for a life of worship. That's pretty impressive for one group of literature to produce for us, and yet it is so vital and so important. This is why Solomon says in, with David in Proverbs 4, whatever it takes, get wisdom. It's that important. It's that vital. Proverbs, what we're going to look at tonight, is about the application of wisdom. Psalms, we're going to look at tomorrow, helps us to shape our emotions so that they work for us and not against us. And that's a huge gift all in itself. Today, though, Proverbs calls us to what wisdom applied in everyday life looks like. They're not so much direct commands, but more like observations and warnings and urgent pleas. For example, Proverbs 4 says, guard your heart. That sounds like a command, but it's more on the line of a plea, an urgent plea. Choose life. Guard your heart. It's, it's, it's a broad plea. How do I guard my heart? Well, we've got the whole book to tell us that. But there's this urging. Guard your heart. In Proverbs 16, we read about how pleasant words promote understanding and instruction. That's huge for us. So it's not so much to be taken as a command, you shall use pleasant words. But if I use words that are pleasant and encouraging, that will make my instruction more peaceful, more pleasing. To understand wisdom literature, we have to understand parallelism, how things work together. Hebrew poetry rhymes ideas. It is terse. It is direct. English poetry tends to rhyme words and is more what we would call poetic. For example, here's the opening lines of Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. So we get a sense of what Frost is doing here. He's, through the words, through the rhyming of words, he's putting us in the predicament of this traveler longing to know which road he should take. But in contrast to this, look at what the Proverbs does. I'm going to look, look at two examples tonight. One in Proverbs 15, verses 1 and 2, help us to understand parallelism a bit, how the parallel thoughts work. Proverbs 15, verse 1. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So you see there's a contrast between the two, but they're meant to fit in parallel. But Hebrew poetry goes beyond that. It's also going to combine this in a parallel sense with the next verse, verse 2. The tongue of the wise adorns knowledge. That lines up with the first part of verse 1. A gentle answer turns away wrath. The tongue of the wise adorns knowledge positive thing. Negatively, but the mouth of the fool gushes folly. That fits with the harsh words shows up anger. So a harsh word stirring up anger is like someone, a fool, gushing folly out of his mouth. 
So that's an example of how these verses work together in parallel form to reinforce the other. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. First set, the tongue of the wise adorns knowledge, but the mouth of the fool gushes folly. So they work as individual, but they work together collectively. That's the beauty of Hebrew poetry. Now, here at Proverbs 3, 5 and 8, 5 through 8, is another very familiar passage of scripture to you that is probably quoted as much as any of the Proverbs. Chapter 3, verses 5, 8, chapter 5. Trust, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So we got parallelism again, but this time they're not contrasting, they work together. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. Trust in your line, Lord, with all your heart. It's the first section. In all your ways, know him. In all your ways, draw close to him. One, one commentator translates it, in all your ways, desire his presence, and he will make your path straight. So we're contrasting that. If you give your heart to the Lord, trust his ways, don't rely on yourself, then you will have straight paths. But then now the parallelism is expanded. We have two more verses in parallel. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. This is verse six, 7. This will be healing to your body and strengthening to your bones. So, again, there's a contrast here, but they work together in parallel. In all four verses, trust have the same theme. Trust the Lord with all your heart, and this will be healing to your body. Trust the Lord with all your heart. All your ways acknowledge him. Be aware of God, want to know him at every step. This will give you a straight, steady path of life to live on. In other words, don't choose what you want. What is it that's going to bring me closer to God? That's what it's saying here. In all your ways, know him. He'll make your path straight. Trust him, not your own wisdom. But then, if you trust your own wisdom, then in verse 7, don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. This is what brings healing, turning away from evil. If, if turning away from evil is the same thing as turning away from being your, having, trusting your own wisdom, trusting your own eyes, trusting your own common sense. Trust in the Lord's wisdom. And then this has the positive impact of bringing health through our body. Now I've got playlists on this. We've talked about this a lot before. But if I give myself to what God says and his wisdom, that will actually heal my body free me from stress, and bless me immensely. Both powerful ways of expressing and moving things. Robert Frost does it through the poetic language and the rhyming of words. Hebrew poetry does it through this moving of ideas, striking us right to the core. It's just beautiful. We're going to look at Psalms tomorrow. But I hope that gives you a little bit of introduction to parallelism, a little bit introduction to how beautiful Hebrew poetry is. Again, thoughts, questions, feedback, really long for them. So much appreciate the comments that you're sending in. And uh, you have a great evening. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye.